Good morning, everybody. My name's Ian. Uh, you can call me Teacher Ian. I'm the owner of Right Start Newcomer Services, and welcome to today's Learn Canadian English live stream, where you get to learn English for free. Um, and this is especially useful for people coming to Canada, already in Canada, interested in Canada, or you just want to learn, you know, Canadian English, how to talk like Canadian people do. So I welcome you all. If you're joining live, thank you so much. If you're watching the replay afterwards, thank you very much. And as usual, you can participate in the chat. And I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear your questions. I want to hear your answers. I want you guys to actually practice using your English in these live streams. Um, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that Right Start Newcomer Services conducts business in Chibuktuk which is how you say Halifax in the Mi'kmaq language. This city is part of the ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This means that when settlers arrived, the indigenous people did not surrender their territory and instead signed treaties with Europeans. As a business, we're committed to upholding these treaties as we continue to build relationships between settlers, newcomers, and Mi'kmaq people. Okay, so who's here? Who's watching today? Where are you? What are you doing? How was your weekend? Um, my weekend was pretty good. Yeah, um, I got my booster shot. So here in Canada, uh, they're giving people a booster. So this is my third shot. Uh, I feel fine. I got it on Friday. I was a little bit tired on Saturday, so I took it easy. But today I'm fine. Yesterday I was fine. Um, other than that, I didn't do too much. It was pretty stormy here. Um, I'll show you outside my apartment. Check out all the snow out there. That's what it's like here these days. So it was cold, super duper cold too. So it's like been minus, minus 10, minus 20 the last few days with lots of snow, blow, windy, icy conditions. So not good for me because I'm a runner. So it's hard to run in this type of weather. Um, okay, but how are you guys doing? Who's here to say hi? Okay, we have a new student. Welcome, Mariu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Mariu from Ecuador. Very cool. So we've got a lot of students from, from South America, but you might be our first student from Ecuador. So Welcome to today's lesson. So happy you could join us. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, and hey, Christian's here. So hey, Christian, how's it going? Good to see you again. Um, Mario, meet Christian. Um, you guys are in sort of the same continent. So it's cool that you get to meet each other through these classes. And hey, Lorraine. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm in Halifax. Stay at home because of the weather. Yeah, it's crazy, right, Lorraine? So the last couple days, Saturday, Sunday, were pretty crazy. Today is supposed to be super windy. So we're supposed to get wind up to 100 kilometers an hour or something crazy. So I'm expecting maybe to lose the power. Uh, it's going to snow and rain as well. So stay home, stay warm. But if you can get outside, it's good to get outside for a walk once in a while. Okay, thank you, Lorraine. Hey, Sandra. Sandra from Colombia, I believe you might also be new. Uh, I don't remember seeing you at any of the previous lessons. So welcome, Sandra. So glad that you can join us from Colombia. That's so cool. Um, hey, and uh, there, now you guys know each other. So we're making friends from all over the world with our classes. Hey, Bay. Bay has been a student for a really long time um, since we started, basically. So we started these lessons way back in February of last year, and Bay has been with us the whole time. So thank you so much for returning, Bay. And your English must be getting better by now, I would think. Uh, I hope so. Anyway, uh, hey, Pilar, how's it going? Um, great. Pilar has also been in these classes for a long time, since at least the fall of last year. So thank you so much for coming back. And let's move on to today's lesson. So we have a good one, I think. I don't know, I always try to make good lessons, but sometimes some are better than others. Uh, so today we are talking about finding an apartment because I put out a call 
a few weeks ago and asked people what they wanted to learn about. And somebody wrote finding an apartment in Canada. So I said, sure, let's do another lesson on finding an apartment in Canada. So if you look back on our YouTube channel, you'll find another video about finding an apartment, renting an apartment, I think it's called. So you can watch that later. This one is supposed to complement that one. Uh, maybe there's some overlap with vocabulary and information, but I think, you know, you can never get enough practice about this. All right, and Eliana's here. Hey, Eliana, good to see you. Uh, welcome, welcome back, Eliana. Okay, so today is finding an apartment. We've got a few objectives. So these are things that we want to learn in today's lesson and be able to do by the end of today's lesson. Uh, hold on, I have to get my cat off the bed. She's getting old and she can't jump down on her own. I'll be right back. Yes, Tracy. Come say hi. Oh my goodness. Come say hi to everybody. Here's my cat, Gracie, if you haven't met her before. She's uh, the best cat in the world. Oh, she's gonna sneeze. Okay, say hi, Gracie. Okay, go get some food. Skedaddle. All right, so that's taken care of. Um, so today's objectives are to learn how to speak with a landlord about renting an apartment, so those of you who are in Canada, you might already have an apartment or a house. Those of you who have yet to come to Canada, this is going to be something you're going to have to do. Uh, most newcomers rent at first, unless you have a big bag of money from your country where you could buy in cash. A lot of people rent for at least the first year or two. And I recommend doing that because you don't know where you're going to end up in Canada. You know, you might move to Vancouver and then later move to Toronto because you get a better opportunity or you don't know the areas of the city. So renting for at least the first year or two is recommended by me. And that allows you to save up some more money for a down payment and find a good job and all that stuff. Secondly, we're going to learn some vocabulary. Uh, we're going to practice our listening and learn vocabulary about renting in Canada. And then finally, we're going to learn some more information about renting here in Canada. Uh, okay, we have lots of comments about Gracie. Uh, so Maria says, good morning, everybody. And teacher, hi, Maria. Hope you're doing well. And Pilar says that Gracie is similar to their cat, Carlotta. Maybe they're related. Um, Gracie's Canadian, you know, she was uh, purchased at a pet store back when they used to have pet stores that sold cats. Um, she's old now. She's like 18 years old almost. Um, so it was nice that you, uh, that Gracie and Carlotta, you know, got to meet each other. Uh, Bay's happy. Great. And she is beautiful. She is a beautiful cat. It's from her good genes. You know, she got jeans from myself and my wife. So, of course, she's beautiful. She's so cute. I think you're saying Eliana. Yes, you corrected it to say so cute. Yes, well, I can bring her back every live stream. If that means that more people are going to watch, I'll bring Gracie back. Maybe it'll just be the Gracie live stream from now on. That was a joke. Just joking. Okay. Does that sound good? We got good objectives. Everybody loves my cat. Let's move on. All right. So today's outline, we're going to do some things. We're going to discuss renting in Canada. We've got a little quiz. So this will work on our vocabulary. Uh, rental terms related to renting in Canada. Then we have an overview of renting in Canada. So this will be a chance to read some information discuss it a little bit about renting in Canada. Then we've got a little grammar. We'll make some questions that we could ask a landlord when we're getting ready to rent that apartment. And then finally, we've got a dialogue. Um, we recorded a dialogue this morning between a landlord and somebody arranging to go view that apartment. All right, so lots of practice, grammar, reading, speaking, all that good stuff. 
Let's start with our discussion as usual. So this time we've got four questions that we can answer in the chat. Number one, what kind of apartment are you looking for or would you be looking for um, if you come to Canada, when you come to Canada in the future? Or maybe you're already here and you're looking for something better. Um, maybe that your current apartment isn't, isn't suitable for you right now. Okay, and number two, this is an interesting question. What are the three most important things when you are choosing an apartment? So besides price, because uh, I think price is really important, what are the other important things? Number three, what are landlords looking for in a tenant? So we're looking for something in an apartment, but the landlords are also looking for something in the renter. They're looking for certain characteristics or certain qualities. And what are those things that they're looking for? Finally, how much does it cost? So I'll show you later, I know exactly how much it costs and we'll take a look at that. But how much do you think an apartment costs in, in Canada? And really it depends on where, right? It depends on the province and the city that you're going to be living in, um, but we'll, will shock you with how much it actually does cost in Canada. All right, so let's hear some answers. You guys can throw your answers in the chat. If you're watching the replay, you can put them in the comment section of YouTube or Facebook. All right, I'll give you a second. Let's see some answers. Christian, this is my, this is my Monday mug my nope, not today mug. So if anybody asks me for something I don't wanna do, I show them this mug and, and move on because I know Christian was complimenting my mug from, from last week, so I wanted to show it to him. Okay, no answers. We lost our logo. Bam. All right, Pilar got a kick out of that. Very cool. Um, I know it's Monday. You guys are shy. Maybe you're tired. Um, but just choose one of those or two of those and put an answer in the chat. And we'll check your spelling and grammar and all that fun stuff. Okay, good answer, Christian. So Christian's answer to number one, describe an apartment you're looking for, an affordable one. Uh, another word for affordable is cheap or, you know, based on your salary or your savings, this is how much you can afford to pay. Definitely, I think we're all looking for an affordable apartment. Um, okay, Christian likes my mug, great. Eliana, I think that the price, location, and services. This is a great answer for number two. Price is super important. Location, you know, they say in real estate, the most important things are location, location, location. So should be close to, you know, your job if you're working, close to transportation if you need to take the bus, close to shopping, close to a good school for your kids. Location is super duper important. Um, okay, great. Thank you for answering, Eliana. Perfect answer. Nancy says, I want one with a lot of space. Okay, great. And this might depend on how big your family is. So if you have a small family, maybe no kids, maybe a one bedroom or two bedroom is enough. If you have two, three, four, five, ten 10 kids, obviously you're looking for a bigger place. And that can be a big challenge in Canada if you have a lot of kids, because the average Canadian family is what? One or two kids, maybe three. A lot of the apartments you're going to be looking at have only maybe two, possibly three bedrooms. And if you're looking for something with four or more bedrooms, you're going to have to probably rent a house in those cases. All right. Great answer, Nancy. Um, Interestingly, Canada uses the metric system, which is meters. 
But when we talk about apartments, we usually use square feet to describe the size of the apartment. So whenever you come, you'll see square feet, maybe a thousand square feet, 2000 square feet. Uh, it's one of those things that Canada doesn't always use the metric system. All right, thank you, Nancy. Pilar says a small apartment which we can pay and we can still stay with our cat. So you're looking for a pet friendly apartment. A lot of apartments are cat friendly, but not so much dog friendly because cats are quieter, they don't cause as much damage. That's a really important one if you are bringing your cat or you're gonna get a pet here in Canada. Thank you so much, Pilar, great answer. I think I see a spelling mistake though. Which, how do you spell which? Which, which, which? So which is W-H-I-C-H, -H. so. Great. Uh, other than that, perfect answer. Well, lots of answers are coming in. That's awesome. All right, Nancy, I have a dog, so he needs to run so he can keep healthy. So Nancy, maybe you're looking for a house with a backyard or a yard for the dog. So that's really going to determine where you can live and it's going to cut down your options. You might have to pay more for a house. And usually when you rent a house in Canada, some things are not included. Like usually utilities are not included when you rent a house versus an apartment. All right, thank you, Nancy, great answer. Um, of course, Nancy, the space. Okay, Eliana, a couple spelling mistakes there. So course and space. But you were probably rushing, so um, I know that you know how to spell those. I just wanted to remind you, course and space. Great, moving right along. Where were we? All right, I think we're on to Christian's answer. So price, location, and kitchen space. All right, so if you're really into cooking, you're gonna look for a place with a nice kitchen and lots of space for for preparing your food and storing food. Great, everybody's different, right? We're all looking for different things. Uh, Fanny, hey Fanny, um, the best important things for me are price, location, and clean apartment. Great, so, I mean, some apartments are old here in Canada. They, no matter how much you scrub it, you're not gonna get it clean. So maybe you're looking for something newer versus something that's pretty old. Of course, the newer the apartment, the more you pay. Um, okay, let's, instead of saying the best important, let's say, Fanny, the most important. Instead of the best important. Most important, not best important. Little important. All right, thank you, Fanny. Um, Bay says, location, pet friendly, big enough for three kids. All right, so... That's a big ask, right? So depending on your age of the kids, so let's say the kids are five years old. It's fine for them to share a room in Canada. The landlord might tell you, no, they can't share a room, but a lot of people do that. So maybe, you know, a three bedroom apartment might be enough if the kids are young. But as the kids get bigger and they become teenagers, probably you're going to want to give them their own room. So then you're looking at maybe four bedrooms or more. Okay, great answer. Thank you, Bay. Uh, space, okay, Eliana. And Sandra says, looking for an apartment with three rooms and two bathrooms. All right, so usually we measure it by bedrooms. So three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Most houses include a kitchen, living area, maybe a den, maybe an office. Uh, price, pet friendly, and location. Great, so those are all great requirements. I'll tell you, you know, it's only me and my wife and my cat living together, but having two bathrooms is, I think it saved our marriage. You know, we don't fight over who's gonna be taking a shower when or go to the toilet whenever. Um, having two bathrooms is amazing. All right. Okay, so Nancy says the place where the apartment is located, so location is very important. 
the people that live around it, and is it if it is safe from robbery? Those are a couple other conditions we didn't discuss. What are the neighbors like? Is it a quiet neighborhood? Um, you know, do they smoke or do drugs or deal drugs? Right? You want to have a safe quiet location. Perfect. Those are great answers, Nancy. Thank you so much. Uh, Pilar, correct her spelling, which great. And Christian says a responsible tenant. Yes. So this goes to number three. What are they looking for? It's kind of like a job, right? We have to sell ourselves to the landlord in order to get that apartment because of all the people competing for the apartment. You know, if we go to view an empty apartment, maybe there's 10 or 20 other people viewing that apartment. We have to show we are responsible. We have to show that we can pay the rent, right? If they don't think we can pay the rent, they might not choose us. So employment, if we have a job, we have a much better chance of getting an apartment. If we can show them through maybe bank statements that we have a lot of savings, that can be a good way to show them that we have enough money to pay for that apartment. All right, so they want someone who's responsible and that can pay the rent. Um, they also look you know, at age, right? If somebody is 19 years old and another person is 35 years old, they're probably going to choose the older person because they'll think, oh, they won't have as many parties, they won't be as irresponsible as the younger person. All right, you need an apartment that has a basement. Yeah, I mean, if you're renting a house or condo, maybe they would have a basement. Basements are great. You know, we don't have a basement, but you can put a lot of stuff in there. Um, could be finished and you might have a, a TV or something down there. Okay, great. Thank you, Nancy. Eliana said, a tenant who is calm and responsible. Responsible with an A or an I? Responsible. I think it's with an I. A responsible with an I. Very, very good, uh, Eliana. Very close. And Nancy says, it depends on the apartment, the place, and also the things that the apartment includes. So that was about the price. The price will vary depending on the apartment itself. So how much space, what is the location, also what is included. A lot of places, you know, now include things like a gym in the building, a common room, uh, even a common apartment that you could rent if someone came to visit you. Um, those will all add to the price. The other thing you want to look for is utilities. So are utilities included? So is um, heat. Heat is a big one in Canada. As you can tell from the outdoor wintry weather, make sure that your heat is included in your rent. Uh, what else? Electricity, sometimes internet. Those things may also be included. Great. Thank you, Nancy. That's awesome. And hey, check. Go care. I don't know how to say that. Checo Kike. That's my guess. Um, welcome to the lesson. They're looking for responsible people committed to take good care of the property. Yes, they want to make sure that you are taking care of their investment, their, their building, their space. So perfect. And they want you to pay rent on time every month. Perfect. So usually rent is due on the first day of the month. If you're not able to pay rent on time, then you could have some problems. Great. Hopefully I said your name correctly. Checo Kike. That's my guess. Awesome. So perfect answers. You guys discussed a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about in a minute. Let's move on. All right. This should be fun. For this one, let's practice our vocabulary. All right, what we're gonna do is um, practice our vocabulary. I'm gonna just read the definition and you guys are gonna give me the word. So this isn't a reading activity, it's more of a listening activity. So I will describe, you listen to what I say and tell me the word. 
So number one, money you pay each month to the landlord. What would we call that? Money you pay each month to the landlord. And let's try to do this pretty quickly. Number one, money you pay to the landlord is called I look really pale today. Maybe it's the Canadian winter finally getting to me. Maybe it's my booster shot, um, but I need to get some sun. All right, I think Fanny got it. So Fanny got rent. That was an easy one. One point for Fanny and Chico Kike also got it. Very good. Rent, everybody got that one. That was a, a warm up question. That was an easy one. Number two, insurance for your apartment. What do we call insurance for your apartment? Again, I'll say it again. Number two, insurance for your apartment. And put your answer in the chat. Starts with T. Insurance pay? Uh, no. No. Fanny, good guess. Eliana doesn't know. OMG. Oh my god. I don't know. And Pilar doesn't know. Oh, I think Checo Kike got it. Renter's insurance. It is called that sometimes. Tenant insurance is the more commonly used expression. Tenant insurance is very important. You should always get tenant insurance. Sometimes it's it's required. Sometimes you, you can just get it on your own. It's pretty cheap. I think right now we're paying like $15 a month for tenant insurance. And I get it through my company that I get my car insurance. So I get a discount. Always, always get tenant insurance. All right. Christian didn't know either. Now you know. Tenant insurance. Always get tenant insurance. All right. Next one, number three, money you pay that you will get back when you move out of the apartment. If there's no damage, you get this money back when you move out. What would we call the money that you pay that you get back when you move out of the apartment? Teacher, can you read me? Yeah, I can see your comments now, Christina. Uh, I didn't see any from before, but I can read them now. Okay. Uh, tenant insurance. Got it. New word for you. Got it. Okay. You guys learned something today. Um, deposit. Yeah, that's part of it, Pilar. So we would call it deposit, 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 rent deposit, at least in Nova Scotia, where I am, we would call it a damage, a damage deposit to prevent you, you know, if you cause damage, they will use that money to pay for the damage to repair it. And then if there's any money left over, they give it back to you. All right. So you, in some provinces, it's one month's rent. They cannot charge you more than one month's rent for damage deposit or a down payment on rent. Some places are sketchy. They try to charge you three months rent. Let's say, oh, you're new in Canada. You don't have a job. Give us three months rent and they will rent you the apartment. That is actually not allowed. So they're not allowed to ask for more than one month's deposit in the beginning. So damage deposit. Now you know, Nancy. So it is called a damage deposit, sometimes rental deposit, maybe as well. All right, number four, 
there's only eight. We're on number four. The agreement between the landlord and the tenant. So this is the name for the agreement between the landlord and the tenant. So the person renting the apartment and the owner or the manager of that apartment. And it starts with L. This word starts with L. What is the name of the agreement? Pilar's guess is rental contract. Fanny says contract. Uh, Nancy's not sure. Uh, Checo Kike says rental contract. Christian's closer with L, legal contract. And Fanny says legal contract. Sandra says rent agreement. Uh, I've seen it called rental agreement. So rental agreement is common, but I'm looking for L for legal contract. Good guess. Uh, just contract. I'm looking for... The L word is lease. I'm looking for lease agreement. Lease, L-E-A-S-E, -E, lease agreement. Uh, but I've also seen it called rental agreement. So lease agreement, rental agreement, that's that's clear. New word, right? Ooh, ooh. Learning new words all over the place. All right, moving on to the second page. We're halfway through. Um, so far, we've done four. I'll show you guys all these answers after, in case you didn't catch what I said. All right, number five. This is an outdoor space attached to your unit. An outdoor space attached to your unit. Where you can sip your coffee. Maybe I have a picture of mine. Um, I think you guys know what I mean now. All right, I can't find a picture, but I think you know. Uh, Den. So, Den is inside. Fanny, a den is like a small room where you might have a TV, you might have a small office. It's technically not a bedroom because it might not have a window. In Canada, they can't call it a bedroom if there's no window. So they, they usually call it a den or an office or something. All right, great. Um, perfect, you're very welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying. Garden is... Maybe there's a garden. Yes, Lorraine got it. I was looking for the B word, balcony. Um, balcony, Bay got it as well. Very good. Garden. All right, there's different things. So a deck is usually attached to a house, uh, usually made of wood attached to a house, usually in the backyard where people have a barbecue. A deck is usually quite a lot bigger than a patio. Um, Patio is usually in the front, if I'm not mistaken. A balcony is usually quite small. And if you're on the third or fourth or fifth floor, we would call that a balcony for sure. Okay, great answer. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, garage, uh, you might have a garage attached. Um, I guess that's ha ha ha. One thing I noticed a couple people said spelling of ha ha ha. Uh, Christian, I've seen you do this before, but we would spell ha 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 H A. Uh, because here in Canada, the J is not silent. We pronounce our J like J. And we want to say ha. So ha 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 H A H A. And you can put as many ha ha ha's as you want. All right. I was looking for balcony. Balcony was the word I'm looking for. Let's move on. Next one. Number six, an apartment that comes with a bed, table, etc. So an apartment that comes already with a bed, a table, um, dresser, chairs, 
all of those things. What would we call that kind of apartment? It starts with F. What's the F word? Not the bad F word. So when you have, oh, Lorraine got it. Lorraine's fast on her keyboard today. Furnished. When it comes with furniture, we would call that a furnished apartment. Perfect. Um, there you go. So spelling difference between English and Spanish. Haha -ha is ja ja in Spanish. Uh, furniture is what you get, but we would describe the apartment as a furnished apartment. So the adjective for furniture is furnished. Uh, furniture is the thing, the adjective is furnished. Yeah, great, awesome. Uh, furnitured, almost, I think that's a new word for me. So let's say furnished is the adjective form of furniture. Awesome. Two more. Things or services like electricity or hydro. They call it hydro in Ontario for some reason. But here in Nova Scotia, we call it electricity, heat, maybe internet. What would you call all of those things? And this one starts with you. It's a you word. You Checo Kike got it. Awesome. Utilities. And Pilar got it. Fanny got it. Great job, you guys. So utilities are all these services that may or may not be included with your rent. Uh, awesome. A lot of places here in Canada, it's it's like a monopoly for utilities. You know, we have some choice with phone and internet. But things like electricity, there's only one company that provides it. Here in Nova Scotia, it's Nova Scotia Power. And we pay a lot for electricity. Uh, not as much as heat or something like that. But uh, with my, my wife and I, we pay something like $60 a month electricity. So you also have to include that when you're calculating your budget. Um, okay, great. Bay got it too. Christian got it too. You guys are awesome. Last one, and this is kind of a gross word, little insects that bite your skin and feed off your blood that might be in your apartment. So Canada has a big problem with this. Little insects or bugs that live in your apartment and bite your skin and are very disgusting. <gasps> Ew, bed bugs. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, bed bugs are a big problem in Canada. They are disgusting, nasty little things. Moo. Cows say moo. Um, I don't know if that's a bug. Um, bed bugs, yeah. You guys know about bed bugs. That's great. Um, if you don't know about bed bugs, Let me see. Um, this is the last, the last one anyway. Let's go through our answers. Um, so just reviewing, we already discussed all these. Number one was money you pay each month is rent. Two, insurance is called tenant insurance. Three, damage deposit is the money you pay that you get back when you move out. Um, Number four, the lease is the agreement between the landlord and the tenant. Number five, the outdoor space is called the balcony when it's attached to your unit. Apartment that comes with a bed, table, etc., is called a furnished apartment, and you're going to pay a lot more for those. Uti things like electricity, hydro, heat are utilities, and then the little insects that bite skin and feed off people's blood, you don't want these in your apartment, are bed bugs. And that's what they look like. Really disgusting. And they bite you and leave red marks that are really itchy. And as Checo Kike says, it's very hard to get rid of them. Yes, once you've got them, 
they go everywhere. They go into all your furniture, all your clothing. You can bring them into work or school. Your kids can take them into the school. You want to check really carefully that the building you're in doesn't have bed bugs. You also want to check if you're buying things like used furniture and clothing. These guys like to hide in those. So that's kind of why I don't buy used furniture or clothing because of bed bugs. So yucky, yucky, yucky. We don't want those. And they're very hard to get rid of. You have to like spray everything and they have to bring in a whole team to deal with bed bugs in your apartment. If you do have them, nothing to be ashamed about. You should tell your landlord right away because they might have to spray the entire building or warn other people. So, yucky, yucky, yucky. All right, let's quickly go through uh, the cost of renting. I know we discussed this a little bit before. Um, I found the current information. Just give me one second. Um, two seconds, actually. How do I increase the size of that? Oh, there we go. Alrighty, let's just share my screen here. All right, so this is a website that's very commonly used in Canada called rental.ca or rentals.ca. And every month or so, they show us how expensive it is in Canada. So this is only for a one or two bedroom apartment. Depending on where you're living in Canada, it can be really expensive or not so expensive. The red, the, the more red that it is, the more expensive it is. So look over here, number one, where is the most expensive city in Canada to rent? Looking at this map. So you can see the number one way over on the west coast of Canada, Vancouver. Exactly. So Vancouver is the most expensive city in Canada. And you can see down here, Vancouver, BC, over $2,000 for one bedroom. For two bedroom, you're looking at close to $3,000. This is just an average, right? This is an average price of all the all the units in the city. More than 2,000 for a one bedroom, 3,000 for a two bedroom. It's crazy. It's crazy expensive. Second, you're looking at this area. So over here, Southern Ontario, where is the second most expensive place? <laughs> Halifax feels like Vancouver. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Um, Halifax is getting to be more expensive, not quite as expensive as Vancouver. Um, yeah, we don't have the mountains, though. So Toronto, yes, Toronto and all the places around Toronto. Uh, Toronto is made up of a whole bunch of little cities around it. All of those are getting really, really, really expensive. So we can see here, um, Toronto is over 2000 a month and for a two bedroom is about $2,700. Pretty expensive. And then a lot of these places are around Toronto. Etobicoke, Mississauga, York, North York, Brantford, Brampton. They're all around in the greater Toronto area. Third, what do you think the third most expensive area is after Vancouver, Toronto. What's the third one? And this one surprised me a little bit. I was thinking Montreal, you know, 
Montreal is the, you know, it's the second biggest city, but it's not the most expensive place to rent. Montreal's pretty far down on the list. Um, actually, number three, I was a bit surprised, is Ottawa. So if you look down at number nine, Ottawa over there is the, really it's the third most expensive city. So it goes Vancouver, Toronto, Ottawa, Halifax, it says it's getting there, right? So after it says here, Halifax is number 12, 1600 a month for one bedroom, two bedroom is almost 2000 a month. And this has increased a lot over the last few years. It's really increased quite a bit, especially here for the one bedroom. So you can see it increased over 10% in one year for renting one bedroom. Two bedroom actually fell a little bit. It fell 2%. So this is a good thing to check out when you're deciding, you know, where you're going to live, how much it's going to cost. Use a website like this to find out a good idea. Um, about what the prices are gonna be. Cheapest places now are in the prairies. So Western Canada, Alberta, Saskatchewan, even Newfoundland. Newfoundland is close to Nova Scotia. That's pretty cheap. So under a thousand a month for one bedroom. Edmonton, this is surprising. You know, Edmonton's a pretty big city. I think it's number four or five in Canada, but their rents are pretty cheap. Uh, also, taxes are very low in Alberta. So cheap rent, cheap taxes. If you work, especially in the oil and gas industry, you'll make tons and tons of money. And don't forget to send me some. All right. So I hope this is useful. I'll provide a link after our lesson to this report. But it can be really useful when you're considering either coming to Canada or moving somewhere else in Canada to check this out. All right. Where were we? We're running out of time. So this is just basic information. Uh, the cost of apartments is rising. Cities are usually more expensive than rural areas. So if you go to a small town, it might be a little bit cheaper. Uh, cost of a two bedroom apartment ranges from under a thousand to over 3000, depending on your city. And thankfully, some provinces have laws that limit the rental increases from year to year. So they don't have a law that says you can only charge this much for an apartment in the beginning. But once you get that apartment, they can't increase it as much as they want. Uh, right now in Nova Scotia, it's 2%. So a landlord can increase the amount of rent 2% after one year of you living in that apartment. All right, good. When you apply to rent, it is very competitive and the apartments you're looking at will go fast. So you have to be really ready to, to agree to rent an apartment. And if not, somebody else is gonna take it. Landlords have some power. So they can do a credit check and they can talk to your previous landlords and they can also request that you have a job or you have a means to pay the rent. So be prepared for that. You should have your documents, your information, and your deposit ready to go. Uh, sometimes they'll ask you to bring a blank check. So make sure when you go to view the apartment, you have all that stuff ready. A lease agreement. We talked about this a little bit. Basically, it's a legal contract. So if you break your lease agreement, you are breaking the law. Uh, you may not go to jail. Probably you won't go to jail, but you may have to pay fees and punishment um, because you broke the lease agreement. Instead of breaking the lease agreement, you can sublet the apartment or find someone else to take it over. Leases, you should always get a copy of the lease agreement um, and always have a written lease. Some places say, oh, we'll just discuss it and we'll agree. Basically, you should have a written lease agreement. Utilities, you may be required to pay for utilities. If you're renting a house, you may have to take care of the yard. 
pets, smoking, and doing business in your unit may or may not be allowed. So you want to ask about that. And you are responsible for damages beyond wear and tear. I don't know if you've heard of this expression, wear and tear, but basically it just means the damage caused by living a normal life in that place. For example, after a year, maybe needs to be painted, maybe there's some marks on the floor from walking on it, that's normal and you don't have to pay those damages. Uh, last thing is just a few tips. Be ready to act fast. Look everywhere. So look online, but also ask your network for help finding an apartment. Don't break your lease. So don't just move out in the middle of the night. Find somebody else to live there who can sublet or take over the lease. Always get tenant insurance. Read reviews. So look online to get reviews about your property company or the place you're going to live and prepare a list of questions in advance. All right, so this is a little tips and information about renting in Canada. Let's do some more grammar practice. So in this activity, I want you to imagine that you're going to rent an apartment. Imagine you're speaking with the landlord. What questions would you ask them? And I've included a few pictures to give you some ideas. So let's try to come up with five, six, seven questions you could ask a landlord. And make sure you're using perfect grammar and spelling. OK, you're very welcome. Uh, Checo Kike, um, you know, if you want to go back, and I know I went through pretty quickly, this will be available on the website, so you can download um, you can download the slides and then go back and refer to them later if you want. Okay, you're very welcome. So, what are some questions we'll ask our landlord? Any question you want just has to be good grammar and good spelling. Perfect question. Okay, Checo Kike says, how much is the rent? How much is rent and what's included? That's great because you're asking first how much and then what utilities and things like that are included. And it may also include things like a gym and a parking spot. Some places parking is included, some places it's not, some places you have to pay extra. Storage closet, right? You might have a storage area in the parking garage that you can use. So it's really important to ask what is included in that rent. Great, awesome. By the way, rent in Canada, there's no tax. So you don't have to worry about paying tax on top of your rent. It's included in the rent payment. All right, great question. And here's Pilar with another question. Is the apartment cat friendly? Perfect, let's just separate cat and friendly. That's a great question. So you want to know, you have your cat, maybe you're bringing your cat to Canada. Is the apartment cat friendly? You don't just want to say, oh, I'll sneak my cat in and the landlord won't know. They might find out and then you could get in trouble. So perfect question, Pilar. Is it allowed to have a cat in the apartment? So that's pretty much what Pilar was saying. Is it allow? You want to say allowed. Or maybe you could say, are we allowed to have a cat in the apartment? I would probably say it like this, Christian. Are we allowed to have a cat in the apartment? And that's a great, that's another way to ask that same question. Here's another question from Jonathan. Great, is the house or apartment furnished? Great question. And maybe you really want a furnished place. So if you're, say, living in Vancouver for a few months just to check it out, you might want a short-term rental, less than a year, that is furnished so you don't have to buy furniture and then move it somewhere else. Perfect question, Jonathan. Good job. And if it is a house, is winter maintenance... 
you could say required or um, is winter maintenance provided? Um, something, you're, you're just missing something after maintenance. Yeah, think about that. If you get a house and you live somewhere where it snows, you're gonna have to shovel the snow for yourself in winter. In the summertime, you're gonna have to cut the grass probably, or take care of the garden or things like that. So always think about that. If you're required to do maintenance, do you want to do that maintenance? Uh, you're very welcome, Christian. What is included with the rent? Great. I think that that's the same question that uh, Checo Kike said before. Great. Thank you, Pilar. Uh, if it is a house, is winter maintenance included with rent or do I have to run to Dollarama to get your snow shovel? Don't go, don't get a snow shovel from Dollarama. Uh, Dollarama is a store here that's pretty much everywhere in Canada, has really, really cheap stuff, uh, usually a dollar to three or four dollars. Don't buy a shovel from Dollarama. You want a good shovel that's made of metal or really good plastic and go to Canadian Tire instead. Okay, good question. Uh, great. So things you can ask, you can ask about utilities, um, the cost of rent, repairs, pets, furniture. All those things are things you need to think about when you're choosing an apartment. Uh, that's a great question, right? How many bedrooms does the house have? Uh, maybe you want to ask what's the size, right? How many square feet is it? Um, how many bathrooms? Is parking included? All that stuff. Okay, great question, Jonathan. And Sandra says, how money I need for the rent deposit? Great question, Sandra. Let's just rephrase it and say, how much is the deposit or damage deposit? So just how much, right? Your question should be how much money or how much is the deposit instead of how money I need. I think you're just missing much. Great, and Viviana says the public transport is near here. Great, another thing, let's just change your question around to put your B verb in the beginning. So is public transportation Close to the You could say it like this, Viviana. Is public transportation close to the building or is public transportation available? That would be a great way to ask. Great. And Carolina says, are the utilities included? You just spelled included wrong. But other than that, it's a great question. Uh, included. So just correct your spelling for included and you're good to go. And Carolina, last question. Are the apartment free bed bugs? Are the bed bugs free? Um, so let's ask, is the apartment free of bed bugs? Are bed bugs included in the apartment? Uh, so I would say it like this, is the apartment free of bed bugs? So we wanna know there are no bed bugs in the building because that would be bad. Great question, Carolina. And what kind of services are around? Yeah, that, that works. So maybe you're looking to know about the area. Um, of course you could Google it, right? Once you get the address, you can Google that area. Are there stores? Um, transportation, we talked about that. But yeah, you want to know about the neighborhood. So you could just say like, what, what's the neighborhood like? Or tell me about the neighborhood, please. Awesome. Awesome questions. You know, question grammar is a little bit tricky. So make sure you work on asking your questions correctly. Uh, and you could ask them over the phone or by email or in person when you go to view the apartment. Perfect. Last thing, I know we're running out of time. Let's do one more quick activity. So let's do another listening practice. 
My wife and I recorded a dialogue. We've got six questions about this dialogue. Listen carefully. I know we talk kind of fast. Try to get answers to those six questions. First one, describe the apartment. So what do you know about the apartment? Number two, what's the landlord's name? Three, how much does it cost? Four, when is the apartment, well, when is the appointment to view the apartment? Number five, sorry, I was reading Christian's question. Uh, you're a funny guy. Are the bathrooms working properly or are they jamming constantly? I hope you don't have this problem at home, Christian. Uh, but yeah, sure. Are the bathrooms working? Are the toilets working or are they clogging up? It's a very, very, very important question. Um, all right, so we got to number four. When is the appointment to view the apartment? What should the person bring with them? So the person who's going to view the apartment, what should they bring? And last question, would you rent this apartment? That's kind of a stupid question. You don't have to answer that. Let's try to get the first five. So I'll leave these questions up here. I'm gonna play the dialogue. Listen carefully and then answer the questions if you can. Give me one second, I gotta find. Alrighty. I think we're good to go. I'm gonna crank up the volume a little bit and one, two, three, go. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, this is Barry Jefferson from Jefferson Property Company. How can I help you? Hi there. I'm calling about the two bedroom, two bathroom apartment I saw on Kijiji. I'm just wondering if it's still available. Yep, if it's still online, then it's still available. Do you have any questions about it? Yes, can you tell me the price? Yep, the price is $16.50 a month. Okay, are pets allowed? Yeah, we allow cats, but no dogs. Great. And are utilities included? Yes. Uh, well, heat and hot water are included, but not electricity or internet. Okay. Can I come see it? Yeah, sure. Uh, how about Wednesday, this Wednesday at 10.30 a.m.? That's perfect. Great. So the address is 543 Beehive Drive. And when you get here, just ring the buzzer for the property manager. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, wait, uh, could you also bring a couple things if you're interested? So uh, please bring your ID, a completed application form. Uh, you can download that from the website and a void check, please. Okay, will do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. How did that go? My wife has a beautiful voice. Mine, not so good. Uh, let's listen again. So maybe you got a few or all of those questions. Let's listen one more time and see which questions you know the answer to. Uh, and then we're done for the day. All right, last time, here we go. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, this is Barry Jefferson from Jefferson Property Company. How can I help you? Hi there. I'm calling about the two bedroom, two bathroom apartment I saw on Kijiji. I'm just wondering if it's still available. Yep. If it's still online, then it's still available. Do you have any questions about it? Yes. Can you tell me the price? Yep. The price is $16.50 a month. Okay. Are pets allowed? Yeah, we allow cats, but no dogs. Great. And are utilities included? Yes. Uh, well, heat and hot water are included, but not electricity or internet. Okay. Can I come see it? Yeah, sure. Uh, how about Wednesday, this Wednesday at 10.30 a.m.? That's perfect. Great. So the address is 543 Beehive Drive. And when you get here, just ring the buzzer for the property manager. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, wait, uh, could you also bring a couple things if you're interested? So uh, please bring your ID, 
a completed application form. Uh, you can download that from the website and a void check, please. Okay, will do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Let's see how you did. You got to listen twice. All right. Let's see if there are any answers. You can answer any of those questions. Um, Carolina, I missed this question. So what time is for use the watching machine or what hours the electricity is more low cost? These are good questions. Um, let's just work on your grammar a bit. So when, maybe you want to say, or what time can you use the washing machines? Um, so washing machines, washing Here we call um, washing machine. You want to say what time can you use the washing machines? Sometimes you'll have a washing machine in your unit and you can use it whenever you want. Sometimes it's a public one where everybody shares it in the building. Um, sometimes they have hours where you can and can't use the washing machine. So that's a good question, right? What time can we use the washing machines? And what time is electricity cheaper? Depending on the province, they may not be any different, right? Here in Nova Scotia, it doesn't matter. It's the same price for most people any time of the day. But I think in Ontario, it's cheaper if you do your laundry overnight. So in some places, you might be able to save money by using electricity late at night or early in the morning. All right, so that's a good question. Let's move on to answers about our dialogue. The apartment is two bathroom, bathroom and bathrooms. That's a lot of bathrooms. Uh, I think you meant bedroom. So two bedrooms, two bathrooms, Christian. Perfect. That's awesome. Barry, uh, good spelling of Barry. Probably B-A-R-R-Y. Let's spell Barry with an A. So let's say Barry Jefferson. And that's the landlord's name. Very good, Christian. Where are we now? Pilar said two bedroom, two bathroom, cat friendly. Very good. Mr. Jefferson, very good. $16.50. Uh, very good. Wednesday at 10.30. Very good. Bring an ID application form. Good, two Ps in application. Missing one thing. Uh, actually, the landlord said three things to bring. But other than that, you got a lot of the right answers. Great, Pilar. Christian, very good. You got the price. Eliana, you got the time. ID application form. And one more thing. Uh, you're also missing the last thing, but very good, Eliana. Jonathan said, two bedroom, two bathroom, very good. Barry Jefferson, very good. $16.50 per month, very good. Uh, 10.30 Wednesday, very good. ID void check and completed application form. So that's what Pilar and Eliana were missing, a void check. A void check is like a blank check that has void written on it. That's how they can get your bank account information and set up transfers from your bank account. Awesome. Very good, Jonathan. That was great. Eliana, very good. Uh, Lorraine, two bed, two bath. Cats allowed. Very good. That was my washing machine comment next Wednesday. Actually, this Wednesday. So let's talk about this for a sec. When you say next Wednesday, I think next week. When you say this Wednesday, I think this week. So Careful with the words this Wednesday and next Wednesday. So next Wednesday is next week. This Wednesday is this week. All right, Christian. Uh, Checo Kike got all the same information, uh, although you added the information about utilities. Electricity and internet are not included. Very good. Perfect. All the other stuff is perfectly correct too. Um, completed application form. Saudi. I think you mean sorry. Okay. 
uh, two B bedrooms, uh, two bathroom, Barry Jefferson, 1650. Oh, that's another one. So 1650, five zero. 1615 would be one five. Catch that? 1650, we say it fast, 50 would be five zero. 15 is one five. Uh, Wednesday at 1030. You guys are awesome. Okay, sorry. Bedrooms, no problem, Christian. You got it, Lorraine. That's awesome. Um, Wenny got the price. Very good. Uh, oh, and Sandra says she can't take the apartment because she has a dog. So no apartment for Sandra. It would not work for her. Electricity is not included. Very good. Fanny's got all the answers. That looks really good, Fanny. Uh, void check, full application. That's awesome. So I think we're done. So we got a lot of practice today. We talked about questions for landlords. We did listening activities. We did vocabulary. We learned information about renting an apartment here in Canada. So we fit a lot in. Sorry, we're a little bit late. I know you guys are busy, but I think that's pretty much it for today's lesson. Um, Pilar, so if we're newcomers, we need to rent a void check always. So not always, but I mean, that's probably going to be the first thing you're going to do is set up a bank account in Canada, right? If you don't have a bank account, how are you going to pay your rent? So probably what most newcomers do is they rent a short-term rental. So Airbnb, something like that. You rent something for a few weeks or a month set up your bank account, hopefully find a job, that type of thing. And then you go to rent a long-term apartment. So you will probably have a void check from a Canadian bank ready when you go to rent that apartment. Does that make sense, Pilar? Good question though. Alrighty. What else? I think that's it. So we're done. Remember, I'm Ian. If you want to go check out the website, you can download the slides and do some quizzes and get some information there. If you have any questions or comments about our lessons or our other services, send me an email. And thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned a lot. And I'll see you again on Thursday. Okay, you're welcome, everybody. Uh, have a good one. Check you later.